It's my birthday today. There are balloons all over the house for some reason because uh, we took them from the park for Amelie. Ah, yeah, it's like what time? 3 almost 3 p.m. The vlog is not fully uploaded yet. It's a bit disastrous. It's got Pekano Prince. Pepe, Pekano Prince. She likes the little prince. She likes to hold the little prince. Yeah. It's not for eating. It's not for eating. No. Slept in. Haven't done anything today other than a little bit of cleaning. Appetit. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go out and have some churros. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's Shelly's favorite thing. How are you mostly sugar free churros, I mean? Yeah. Yummy. This is yours. This is ours. Mm. I wanted to film this video a bit earlier with sunlight and stuff, but it was a bit complicated. Not really complicated. The day was really lazy. And then Shelly was feeling really sick. I had to look after Amelie in the afternoon. A friend came over. We watched a movie. We watched Jackie Brown by Tarantino. It's a great movie. Love that movie. And I did consider making a very short video today and saying, Sorry guys, it's my birthday. I had a relaxing day. But then I changed my mind. Today, my friend, the little prince, and I will explain how it feels to be 30. Yes, I do have a... Little Prince figurine. I also have a collection of the Little Prince books. This is my English copy. One of my English copies. Let me get another one. Actually, that's my only English copy. I have a Portuguese copy of a beautiful, like, book that does magical things. It's a wonderful book. Yes, I collect Little Prince stuff. And that's why I was so excited when Shelley gave me a very awesome the Little Prince treasure box and when Max Bid sent me a Little Prince in Italian and when people give me things that are really close to my heart it has that effect. Before I go into answering the question how does it feel to be 30? I'm going to read two short parts of this book. I'm gonna start with a dedication to Leon Worth. I asked the indulgence of the children who may read this book for dedicating it to a grown-up I have a serious reason. He's the best friend I have in the world. I have another reason. This grown-up understands everything, even books about children. I have a third reason. He lives in France, where he's hungry and cold. He needs cheering up. If all these reasons are not enough, I will dedicate the book to the child from whom this grown-up grew. All grown-ups were once children, although few of them remember it. And so I correct my dedication to Leon Worth when he was a little boy. Now let me find the other part I want to read. This is in chapter 4, so more towards the middle of the chapter. If I have told you these details about the asteroid, because the little prince came from an asteroid, and made a note of its number for you, it is on no account of the grown-ups and their ways. Grown-ups love figures. When you tell them that you have made a new friend, they never ask you any questions about essential matters. They never say to you, what does his voice sound like? What game does he love best? Does he collect butterflies? Instead, they demand, how old is he? How many brothers has he? How much does he weigh? How much money does his father make? Only from these figures do they think they have learned anything about him. If you were to say to grown-ups, I saw a beautiful house made of rosy brick, with geraniums in the windows and doves on the roof, they would not be able to get any idea of their house at all. You would have to say to them, I saw a house that cost £4,000. That's really cheap. Uh, this book was written a long time ago. Then they would exclaim, Oh, what a pretty house that is. By now, you're probably wondering why on earth I like this book so much. Why does he like a children's book so much? You will understand in a second. I feel like when people ask, how does it feel to be this specific age? They're actually asking, how does it feel to be closer to death? I mean, it may sound a bit morbid, but that's, that's generally like the feeling, right? There's only one thing that is certain in life is that we're all going to die. All of us, one day, will die. And the older you are, it's the higher the chance that you will die. How does it feel to be 30? How does it feel to be 30% closer to that? How does, how does it feel to be 80? How does it feel to be about to die any moment? Like, that's pretty much the question, isn't it? Like, at least one of the underlying questions of the question. But honestly, I don't care. The one thing I care is what will I think of my life? when I die. What kind of legacy have I left? Did I do something actually useful with my life? And if you read any of those reports of people who have a terminal illness when they're in the end of their life and they say, oh, I wish I had done this more, I wish I had done this more, I wish I hadn't worried so much about this, I wish... You get my point. That's something that I don't think only when I turn 30, but it's something that I think every time 
I think about what I'm doing with my life. Turning 30 doesn't make you significantly older from one day to another. I'm getting older as I'm filming this video. I'm getting older every day, I'm getting one day older. It's not like suddenly I'm 30. Oh my gosh, what the heck? And what does The Little Prince have to do with any of this? It's very simple. The Little Prince is not a book for children. The Little Prince is a book about a little prince. Wow, what a guess. But it's also not really about a little prince. It's a parable. It's about what really matters in life, or at least one way of looking into it. The point that I'm trying to make and the point that this book also makes from time to time is that when you get older, your priorities tend to change. You, what matters to you tend to change. Suddenly money is really important. Suddenly having a well-paying job is really important. Suddenly your clothes, the way you dress are really important. Suddenly the way other people see you are really important. And it contrasts with what children find important. Children generally don't care about the clothes they're wearing. Children don't care about money. They don't even know where the money comes from. They just wanna spend it and buy things and get things. Children, when they make friends, they don't care if they're rich or poor. What's the color of their skin? What do they think about this issue? They just have fun together and suddenly they are friends. Now, I'm not saying that getting older and wiser and having better understanding of life is a bad thing. Children can behave in ways that are completely inappropriate and annoying. Children can be very childish sometimes. As we get older and wiser and learn more about life, if we forget about the things that really matter, that used to matter when you're younger, like your friends, your family, just people in general, for example, if you forget about that, and start putting other things as being significantly more important, then I think it's a big mistake. As you have probably already noticed, you know, in your years of being alive, some things are important for a very short period of time, for a month, maybe for a day, maybe for an hour. Oh, this is really important to me, and then an hour later you forget. But some things are important for a very, 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 very long time. A big mistake that I think we all make at some point or another, and some to a higher degree than others, is we, get the value of these things wrong. Sometimes you're so fixated in this thing that this is really important to me and then neglect the other things and then you realize that this thing that was really important to you is only important to you f for a year when the other things you neglected are important for much longer than a year. And to me, if I'm getting older and losing perspective of things that are really important in life, I am failing. That, that's not where I want to go. And honestly, although I'm really, really, really far from being perfect, I think so far I've been doing really well when it comes to that. While my body doesn't feel particularly young, my hand is starting to hurt from typing, I think. I should probably get it checked out because I type a lot and I really need to keep typing because that's my job and I also need to edit videos. It's very frustrating, my shoulder and my neck and stuff. Inside, I feel like I'm a child. Not childish, but childlike. But at the same time, gaining experience and wisdom from all these years that I've been alive. It's the combination of the best of both worlds. And it's a great thing. And I also feel like, so far, I achieved a lot in my life. I'm married to a beautiful, amazing wife, have a beautiful daughter amazing daughter, have a good job, which is something that a lot of people care about, and it's particularly important for me at this stage of my life because I can maintain my family. But I've also been following the dreams that are really close to my heart, you know, doing this every day is really important to me, and so far I'm doing really well. And this is just the beginning, I still have many, many, many more years, at least 70 to go, so this is only 30% of that. It's like when you're copying files and it's on 30%, and you're like, oh gosh, I'm just gonna go and watch a movie instead because this is gonna take so long. That's pretty much how I feel. All right, that's enough talking for me. This is gonna take a huge amount of time to edit and it's already half past midnight, so I'm not looking forward to that. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for being supportive. Thank you for your birthday wishes. They're all so amazing. And uh, if you haven't read this book, I strongly, utterly recommend from the bottom of my heart. And then later tell me how you feel about it. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Okay, let's get ready. Let's get ready. Hehehehe <laughs>